the number one most remote track in Australia. It's not every day you get to stand in the exact location where a nuclear weapon has gone off. It was a magnificent night. We sat around under the shelter because it was raining quite a bit. Uh, but just sitting there watching the lightning storms roll through was absolutely amazing. Last night was really special. We couldn't have enough cameras out there filming in every direction around this place. And this place is Emu. This is where uh, the expeditioners and the people involved in the nuclear program were camped. And uh, we've set ourselves up here as our little home base as well. So uh, there's remnants of the, uh, the old weather station through here and uh and scattered all around the place is little little bits of reminders there's, there's not a great deal here but there's some reminders that there was people here all those years ago looking to blow things up so bit of a recap on yesterday went and checked out totem one and totem two that's where the uh the uh, nuclear detonations happened that's ground zero that was uh that was pretty cool seeing the uh, the damage to the the very large steel structure that was holding the bomb was pretty cool and you can see all around where the vegetation hasn't quite grown back uh you know there's almost a, a football size field of just low grass which i thought was kind of cool so the job for today for us is we're gonna leave here. We'll go for a drive down the airport, which is a, a big long clay pan that's rock hard. We, we had a bit of a play there yesterday, but we're a bit keen to set up camp given the, uh, the rain and weather that was coming through. So we'll go for a quick drive down there. And then the, we're making our way to the uh, Woomera prohibited area. So this is where you need the uh, government permit to uh, pass through that area. And it's well signposted and you can't camp in this one particular section so we need to play it by ear a little bit for timing if the track gets uh, if the track stays the same it'll be quite easy for us to get through there and pass through the other side but if it gets a, a little bit slower then we need to play it by ear on uh, how we're going to do this because you don't you don't want to finish the day in the middle of that area you're not allowed to camp there so We'll, we'll, we'll judge that, we'll get the timing right. And um, we're aiming to be in the uh, Alukura. I, I, I'm never gonna be able to pronounce that one. I'm gonna ask the guys when I get there, the roadhouse on here, how to pronounce that word. Um, it's like the Canning Stock Road all over again. But I can say Kunawarichi now. Uh, so yeah, they, they don't uh, open on Sundays. Today is Friday, and they only open on Saturdays uh, from 8 till noon. So we're, we're trying to get in there early in the morning on Saturday, but uh, we've got plenty of time up our sleeves, so if we've got to hold short and, and wait till Monday, that's what we'll do. So, all good. All right, time to pack up camp and go check out this airport. Windy. I'm sorry if the uh, wind noise is annoying you, but uh, we've just arrived at Anne's Corner, which uh, she's pretty overgrown. I don't think a car's gone down this way for a very long time. Anne's Corner is basically a most direct route, I guess you could say, the most direct route to Surveyor's Corner, which is where the border of Northern Territory, South Australia and WA meet. So uh, this is what... Um, Len Bedell would have used to, to cut across uh, through the desert to lay his uh, sensors that they needed to track the missile performance uh, for the Woomera uh, launch area back back in the day. I'm not sure what sensors are still out there nowadays, but um, crisscrossing the desert, if you weren't aware 
a lot of these uh, gun barrel construction company tracks that we are doing as part of the HEMA top five most remote tracks in Australia are um, quite specifically for the nuclear program that was back in the 50s. Uh, they they are cut across the desert so they could run sensors and instruments to track the performance of the rockets as they travelled from Woomera towards and over the top of 80 Mile Beach which is in WA and that was a great big stretch of land the longest stretch of land on the planet at the time that had absolutely nothing in it so it was basically a corridor you could shoot rockets down through and be guaranteed you're not going to hurt anyone so uh, that's uh, that's in short what all of these tracks like the Anbidel Highway were for so uh, the Ambedel was to link to the bomb site for the nuclear weapons, but uh, it's also to link up for sensors, same as the Connie Sioux and, uh, and the other tracks that the Gun Barrel uh, Construction Company ended up cutting through the area. So uh, I'll be covering most of those tracks over the next uh, three months for you, and uh, we'll slowly give you a little bit more detail about... Uh, the history, I guess, of Len Bedell, the Gun Barrel Construction Company, and the Australian, well, wasn't it really Australian, the British, American, and Australian nuclear program and uh, missile test facilities. So I'm looking forward to sharing that with you. Down this road here, that is Anne's Corner, which heads to Surveyor. Uh, Surveyor General, uh, was it? Surveyor's Point. And as you can see, it hasn't had any tyre tracks going down here for a long time. But there are footprints, which is interesting. And these footprints aren't all that old. That's it. Time to hit the road again. We are making really good time very surprised at how quick it is to travel along this track um, yeah we're averaging easy 50 k's an hour still so uh, at the rate we're going we'll pretty comfortably get to the border today next stop border signpost delivering power equally front and back and then you know if you're just cruising along it could be 90 to 10 percent front so they sort of chop and change a bit when you lock them in manually uh, distribute it do, 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 distributes it evenly so four wheel drive drive 50 percent front 50 percent rear yeah that's it exactly right pretty much it's the easiest way to put it So we've got on the radio and uh, we've chatted to the boys. It looks like we're running a little bit late. There's a section on the Ambedel that I'll point to you in a map that uh, you're not allowed to camp because it's in the Woomera protected area. And uh, we are still in that area now. So uh, as you can see, it's a little bit slower going through this section. There's some water damage, ruts, uh, a bit of, bit of fun, nice, nice side angle stuff. Um, nothing too major though. So uh, we are going to maybe stop, have a really quick bite to eat and then continue on 
uh, for a couple of hours into the night just to make sure we get onto the other side of that no camping zone so it had been fairly quick this whole trip and uh, then all of a sudden it wasn't anymore so that's that's a bit of a pain in the butt but uh, we won't camp in the prohibited area and, and we'll get on the other side and everyone will be happy hot dogs for dinner tonight something quick and easy so Gav here is our resident chef and he's making us a magnificent feed for lunch. What have you got for us? Alright, uh, I've just got some wraps, um, some ham, I've chopped up some capsicum, tomato, I've got a bit of avocado here, um, aioli, English spinach leaves, <laughs> what else have I got here? Cracked salt, I can't find the cracked pepper at the moment. Yeah, we do have one um, somewhere. <laughs> yeah, and some cheese, I think. Bloody beautiful. So it should be pretty tasty. So if you've been watching my shows before, you know I don't eat anywhere near this good when I'm out and about, so I feel very lucky to have Gav coming along. So something that is really cool about these remote tracks is uh, everywhere you go, someone's put in a letterbox just like this, and there's visitors' books for you to fill out and sign. Quite often people leave pens in them too, but try and bring your own pen if you can. I've just filled this out for uh, our group. And um, I'm going to get the boys to come over and sign it in a minute. But this is basically the history of the people that have travelled the track. The couple that are behind us having lunch now, this is their 20th anniversary of doing this track for the first time. So they've come out to celebrate that and do it again. They went looking for the, uh, the book just in here. And uh, unfortunately, it's not in there anymore. What often happens is someone like Track Care will come along and they'll collect the visitors books in here and uh, from that they'll take them away they'll record all the names and the details take photos uh, archive it and then they'll often put a copy back in these when they come around next but it can take a few years before they get around back to these areas to put the copies in so unfortunately the couple missed out seeing their old signature from 20 years ago just by uh, a couple of months so uh, but Definitely try and look after these things if you come over, fill out the book, make sure you uh, close the lid so that way no moisture gets in there and they're good to go for the next person that comes along. And here we have two Bogan vehicles in their natural environment herding a singular dingo while simultaneously doing donuts in salt pans. All of the things are happening right now. What's up? What happened to your aerial? Uh, Ryan broke it. Why did he do that for? You're not turning the stakes properly. No, I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> I'm on fire! My legs are on fire! <laughs> <laughs> We've tried everything to get these camels off the road and to stop them running. These, these camels are going to run themselves to death. We 
are running out of ideas. We even stopped for, what, 15, 20 minutes, yeah. then started driving again, and they're still running down the road when, once we caught up with them. I, I don't know. We tried to go around, uh, Cameron just tried to go around on a wider section of this track, and the, uh, the adult male, we're guessing, sort of swerved across to, to protect the herd and um, prevented Cam from getting around. So, I don't know. They're still doing nearly 30 k's an hour, 27 k's per hour. And uh, these camels have been on the road now, what, half an hour, you reckon? Yeah, oh, minimum. Minimum, yeah. Hey Cam, how long these camels been running down the road now, you reckon, half an hour? Yeah, I was just uh, letting the audience know on camera. Oh, here you go. Maybe he's not blocked. <laughs> he really is yeah. blocking you off, isn't he? Yeah, he keeps moving across every time we want to get past. Check that, yeah. They are going to absolutely run themselves ragged and uh, I don't know what to do. Like, if you stop for 15 minutes and let them go, you'd think they'd bugger off into the bush, but they're still running. Yeah, I'm kind of hoping for a little uh, chicken track we can pass them, I guess, or at least a bit of width. They're like the uh, forest gumps of the camel world. <laughs> yeah, I feel like we're their support crew for a marathon runner Pretty or something. Much. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan was just saying he feels like a support crew for a marathon runner. Oh, there we go. Maybe the others will bugger off now. Yeah, we got rid of one. He's bailing on them. Oh, there he goes too. <laughs> They're leaving the kid behind. Oh, the poor kid. Oh, ruthless. It's like camels on the menu, oh, boys. Oh, come on. Get off the road, you little bugger. Just pick up the Looks like he's about to fall over. If we stop, he'll go back to mum and dad. I bet you they're a bit tender when they're younger. <laughs> Juicy camel steaks for dinner. <laughs> hey, we don't want to separate it too far from its family as well, so... I don't know. Oh, oh. he's done it. Oy. Oh, nice job. Crikey. Yeah, and he's gone off the track. Well done. Oh, punch it. He's going to go back. Oh, he's coming back. Oh, holy <laughs> shit. Holy shit. He was coming straight for us. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, my that God. Intense. That dead set thought he was going to collect us. That camel uh, turned around and started coming straight for us. I had to punch it, <laughs> and it was probably a meter away from my right hand window by the time I got around. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> holy shit! I've never seen anything like it. It was just desperate to stay on the track. Yeah, yeah. 